All right, so in this problem, I have one over a to the power of x plus a to the power of x plus a to the power of x plus a to the power of x is equal to 64. So I obviously want to find the value of x here. So for my solution, I'm going to first start by rewriting my equation over here. So I have one over a to the power of x plus a to the power of x plus a to the power of x plus a to the power of x is equal to 64. Now from here, notice how I have four of the same terms for my denominator, meaning I can just factor out that one term. So I get 1 over a to the power of x times, well, a to the power of x divided by a to the power of x is 1, so I get 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, which is equal to 64. And now 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 4, so I get 1 over a to the power of x times 4 is equal to 64. Now from here, I'm going to rewrite all these terms in the power of 2. So 4 here is equal to... 2 squared. 8 is the same thing as 2 to the power of 3. So I have 2 to the power of 3 to the power of x. And finally, 64 is the same thing as 2 to the power of 6. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 2 to the power of 3 to the power of x over here that's going to equal 2 to the power of 3 times x, which is simply 2 to the power of 3x. And I have this times 2 squared is equal to 2 to the power of 6. Now, I can multiply both sides by 2 to the power of 3x times 2 squared. So when these two cancel out, or sorry, these four terms cancel out, and I'm left with 2 to the power of 6 times 2 to the power of 3x times 2 squared is equal to 1. And because all these powers have the same base, well, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times a to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m plus n. So let's first start off with 2 to the power of 6 times 2 to the power of 3x. That's going to equal 2 to the power of 6 plus 3x. And I have this times 2 squared which is equal to 2 to the power of 6 plus 3x plus 2 is equal to 1. Now, 6 plus 2 is 8, so I get 2 to the power of 8 plus 3x is equal to 1. And I can write this as 2 to the power of 3x plus 8 is equal to 1. And now, 2 to the power of what number is equal to 1? 2 to the power of 0, right? So I can write this as 2 to the power of 3x plus 8 is equal to 2 to the power of 0. And now, to solving this is pretty simple. If I have something in the form a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n, this means that m is equal to n. So in this case, 3x plus 8 is equal to 0. And now we have a simple equation. All I have to do is subtract 8 on both sides, so I get 3x is equal to negative 8. And now if I divide both sides by 3, I get x is equal to negative 8 over 3. So now, to check, my original equation was 1 over a to the power of x plus a to the power of x plus a to the power of x plus a to the power of x is equal to 64. Now, we know that x is equal to negative 8 over 3. So... I'm going to plug in negative 8 over 3 in place of all my x's here. So what is 8 to the power of negative 8 over 3? Well, 8 to the power of negative 8 over 3 is the same thing as 1 over 
8 to the power of 8 over 3. And 8 to the power of 8 over 3 is the same thing as the cube root of 8 to the power of 8. So we have, well, 8 to the power of 8, 8 to the power of 8 over 3, I can rewrite 8 as 2 to the power of 3. So now I have 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 8 over 3, and these two 3s cancel out, so I get 1 over 2 to the power of 8, which is equal to 250, 1 over 256. So now I get 1 over, 1 over 256 times 4, which is equal to 1 over 4 over 256. And this is equal to 1 over 1 over 64, which is simply equal to 64, meaning 64 is equal to 64. And our solution is right. All right, so in this equation, I have 3 to the power of x to the power of 3 over 9 to the power of x is equal to 81. So to solve this, I'm going to first write 9 as 3 squared. So I get 3 to the power of x to the power of 3 over 3 squared to the power of x is equal to 81. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 3 to the power of x to the power of 3 over 3 to the power of 2 times x, so 3 to the power of 2x, is equal to 81. I'm going to rewrite as 3 to the power of 4. So now notice how I have everything in the base of 3. So this is going to make it much easier to solve. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m over a to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m minus n. So 3 to the power of x to the power of 3 over 3 to the power of 2x is going to equal 3 to the power of x to the power of 3 minus 2x, which is equal to 3 to the power of 4. And now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n, this means that m is equal to n. So x to the power of 3 minus 2x is equal to 4. And now if I subtract 4 on both sides, I get x to the power of 3 minus 2x minus 4 is equal to 0. Now we have an equation here, and this isn't a regular quadratic equation because we have a power of 3 here, and we have a missing power of 2. We don't have a power of 2. So to actually solve an equation like this, what we have to do is we have to test out values, and then once we get a value that works out, we have to use that one value to find all the remaining values that are solutions to the equation. So let's first start out with 1. If x is equal to 1, then I get 1 to the power of 3 minus 2 times 1 minus 4, which does not equal 0. Now if x equals 2, I get 2 to the power of 3 minus 2 times 2 minus 4. 2 to the power of 3 is 8. 8 minus 2 times 2 is 4, and 4 minus 4 is 0. So this does equal 0. So 2 is a solution. To be more precise, x equals 2 is a solution, meaning x minus 2 is equal to 0. So now what we're going to do is we're going to divide x minus 2 with x to the power of 3 minus 2x minus 4. So I get x to the power of 3 minus 2x minus 4 over x minus 2. And to solve this, we're going to have to use synthetic division. And if you guys don't know what that is, I would recommend watching a YouTube video on it. So our coefficients of our numerator is 1, negative 2, and negative 4. And then we have a 2 over here, 
I'm going to bring down 1. 2 times 1 is 2. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. 2 times 0. Oops, sorry, I actually did something wrong. We should have a 0 in here because, remember, we have a power of 2. So because there's no power of 2 here, we just put a 0. Now, if we bring down 1, we get 2 times 1, which is 2. 0 plus 2 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Negative 2, time, negative 2 plus 4 is 2. And 2 times 2 is 4. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. So we have a remainder of 0. And we get x squared. Our coefficient is 1 plus 2x. Coefficient is 2 plus 2 at the end. So I get x squared plus 2x plus 2 is equal to this. And this also means that x minus 2 times x squared plus 2x plus 2 is equal to 0. So for this equation, I get x minus 2 is equal to 0, and x squared plus 2x plus 2 is equal to 0. For x minus 2 equals 0, x is obviously equal to 2, and we already got this solution before, so this is no surprise. Now for x squared plus 2x plus 2 equals 0, to solve this, we have to use the quadratic formula, which is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So I get x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 squared, which is 4, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 2, all over 2a, so 2 times 1. And now this is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus a, which is negative 4 over 2, which is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 times negative 1 over 2, which is equal to negative 2 plus or minus 2i. Square root of negative 1 is the same thing as i over 2, which is the same thing as negative 1 plus or minus i. So my three solutions to the equation are x equals 2, x is equal to negative 1 plus i, and x is equal to negative 1 minus i.